What's up guys? So I have the simplest Next.js application up right now and I would like to add GraphQL to it. I have a GraphQL server that I'd like to query and get the response and show it on the screen here. Now if you don't know what Next.js is, it is a, or you don't know how to install it, I have a video which I'll link in the description below um, that'll help you get set up and so you can get to the screen that looks like this. Now, the server I'm going to run this on is something that I've made before, and I have the starter code in the description below. Or you can set this up if you have your own GraphQL server, or if you want to use something else like GraphQL, which I'll show in a second. You can do that too. But here's the query that I'd like to execute. It's super simple. I just want to get all the users, and I want to get the username. And there's only one user right now, Bob7. So I want to see Bob7 pop up here after doing the query. Now, the library that we're gonna to use to actually set up GraphQL on this is Apollo Data, or a React Apollo is the actual library name. Um, and it's actually incredibly difficult to set up with Next.js. Um, there's this whole GitHub project example here that shows you how to actually initialize it. And I thought rather than redoing it, because um, there's two files that are have quite a bit inside of them. Um, here and here, just to set up this library. And usually this library is super easy to set up, because, but because this is uh, server rendered, uh, Next.js is, you have to do a little bit more. So I'm gonna put this link in the description below to this library here, this GitHub link, so you can follow along with me, because what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste these two files this initializes all the hard work for us, so we can actually get to doing the GraphQL and actually do the query and get stuff set up. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. So the first is in the lib slash init Apollo. We're actually just gonna copy and paste this. So here's my project right here. It's got nothing going on with it yet. And I actually don't even have React Apollo installed, so let's install that first. So I have it open here, the project that is. And I'm just gonna do yarn, excuse me, yarn add, and then React Apollo. And I'll go ahead and download the library that we need. Okay, so now in the outside directory, I'm gonna create a new folder called Apollo. And I'm gonna create a init apollo.js. And I'm just gonna paste this in here. I'm gonna save it. And that's it. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. This is the lib with data page. And now this just sets it up. This is not executing any queries or anything. This just sets up our application so that we can uh, do queries. Now, this init Apollo file has the URL to the database, or not the database, but our GraphQL server. Uh, they have one in here, GraphQL. If you'd like to use this, you can. Uh, I'm gonna, I wanna use my own server, so I'm gonna replace this. Mine is at localhost 3000 slash GraphQL. All right, and now to actually use this, um, we, so that, that was just initializing things. Now I would like to use it on my index page. How do I actually do that? So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now. So we have to tell GraphQL what query we would like to run. So to do that, we need two things, GQL and GraphQL. And this is from React Apollo. And we need to actually create our query that we wanna run. Um, and to do that, we're actually gonna put GraphQL query here, just a string. And we call the GQL function on this string. And you can see it's funky like this. Uh, this is just the convention of how they do it. So I'm actually just going to go to graphical, copy and paste the exact query I want to get run. Perfect. And now what I can do is I can say uh, const, we'll call it GraphQL index, still our case, is equal to GraphQL. We pass in our query and we call it on our function here. And actually, let's, okay, so let's call 
I'm going to break this up a little bit. So our index here is going to be this. Oops. And we'll put it here. Okay, so this is my component index here. And then we're going to create a GraphQL index. So this is a just a regular component, right? It has no GraphQL. So when we call this GraphQL function on it, like so, we're injecting this query in there. This is a higher order function. So now this index will actually get as parameters a data parameter. And this data parameter will actually have what we need. Um, but I, I don't want to pop it up here yet. I want to show you what it looks like in the props because it might be different for you if you do a different query. Okay, so we have this GraphQL index component here now. That is what we want to use. Um, last thing we need to do is do that with data thing. So import with data from Apollo slash with data. And this basically just tells it what server, configures it with server rendering and all that stuff. And this is actually what we'll export. So export default with data, our GraphQL index. And that's it. Um, we'll come over here, see if it renders okay. We forgot to do uppercase G. Save that. And oops, for whatever, oh. I was recording in my uh, Vim key bindings, that's why I was not saving. Uh, refresh, all right, see, so see, so no errors, perfect. Now if I go to my React Dev Tools, I can actually click on this real quick here. And for whatever reason, it wasn't working, so we'll just come down here. All right, so if I click on my index component, um, that's this guy right here, right? We see it has a data prop, and then it has all these things. And the thing we care about is the all users query which is an array, and the first one is the username Bob7, exactly what we wanted. So we can actually grab this from our props, and since this is a pure function, we get the props right here. So I can say data, um, and then I can say all users, and all users is gonna be an array. So what we could do is inside our div here, let's make this Come down and wrap everything. This we'll fix the formatting in a second, and we'll say all users dot map. And I'm gonna take a user. Take the user. We're not. This is not a great way to do it. You're not supposed to use this as a key, but we'll use the index as a key right now. And we'll create a list item where we get the user's username. And we'll use as a key the index. And I'll show you in a second what you, why you shouldn't be using this and what a better way to do it. But let's just see if this renders. And I think we're good now. Parentheses match up. So let's just wrap this in a unordered list. Come back over here. Uh, U.username. We just need to wrap this and curly braces. Okay. All right, now we see Bob7, nice. So if we were to add more users, we'd see more users pop up. Now, better convention is not to use the index because this is not unique to the user. A better way to do it is to actually use the ID. So you want to use the u.id, but we didn't actually fetch the ID with our query, so let's do that as well. So now this is a much better mapping. And that's usually what you want to do on a map. And we're, this broke it now, all users. Uh, cannot read property map of undefined. Okay, we refreshed and now it's working. Not sure why we were getting that before. And all right, we're good to go. Um, we mapped and did our query and showed it. So that is it for this, guys. I'm going to put uh, this code up on GitHub if you would like to see it. Um, and I'll also put this Apollo example up on GitHub too. Or not, it's already on GitHub, but I'll put the link in the description below so you can uh, come use this and use this as an example as well. 
And so any page you want to add, so because we used with data here, I can do more GraphQL things here. But for example, my hello page, I would have to do with data on this component. So something like this, if I want to do GraphQL stuff on the hello page. So every page that you want to do GraphQL things on, you need to do this with data thing. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you had any trouble setting up GraphQL with Next.js. I'd be happy to help because it's a little weird. There's a ton of this code behind it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.